should you look at more than price to rent ratio when buying a property this particular property on the screen my client sent it to me the price to rent ratio is off the charts does that mean it's a good investment for him or should we dig a little deeper let's find out what we uncover right now This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. Today, I'm working with a man from California by the name of Dirty Sanchez. That's what he asked me to call him, and that's what I am going to do. Dirty. Mr. Dirty. Can I call you Dirty Dirty? Yeah, Dirty. Anyway, my dude Dirty here, investing from California in Cleveland, Ohio, because where he lives, it's very expensive. Now, he sent me this one. You sent this to me, Dirty. 1890 Mannering Road, Cleveland, 44112. Priced at 85 k and you're attracted to this because of the price to rent ratio. We don't have any pictures of the inside of the property. We just have the outside stuff, which is fine. Uh, that's no big deal. That's pretty normal, folks. I know sometimes when out-of-state investors see that there's no photos, they freak out. Like, what are they trying to hide? They're not trying to hide anything. There's just already three tenants living in there, right? We got rents at eight fifty, seven fifty, and six hundred. Now, anybody out there doing the math, you're like, wait, what? Eight fifty, seven fifty, and six hundred for a price point of eighty-five k must be the greatest deal in the world. That's that's where the catch comes in, right? You see, it's it's in a super blighted neighborhood, okay. Uh, and it's not the worst neighborhood I've seen in the Cleveland area. You can definitely get yourself into some far more sketchy areas than this. Uh, but on my ultimate guide, I have graded this an F. Now, when you get into these F-grade neighborhoods, it just becomes incredibly problematic to consistently collect that rent. And the housing values are historically low, right? So this is our home. And then right here you can see vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant lot, vacant lot, right? You go over here. Here's another vacant lot. There's another vacant lot. There's another vacant lot, right? You're going to start to see a lot of these vacant lots. Now these are – here. here's another one I missed. Uh, where would it go? Uh, there's another one right there. I don't actually remember if I saw that one or not earlier. But uh, you go up to the next block, right? You see some more, right? We start to see some more up here, right? Here's one, two, three, four, right? You start to see some. Now, when you get into these blighted neighborhoods, right, all these vacant lots, right, that's when a house is so dilapidated, it would actually cost more money to fix it up than uh, it would be like people would be like, all right, well, what's the ARV of a renovated duplex? I guess that's the question, right? And then when you get into some of these blighted neighborhoods uh, where there's issues, it might cost you like a hundred grand uh, to renovate a duplex that's all blighted, but the ARV of said duplex is only fifty grand, right? Anybody out there who could do math is like, well, that don't make no sense. Yeah, no shit. Of course, it doesn't make sense. That's why there's a bunch of vacant lots because people who own them, they're like, wait. A renovated duplex is worth fifty. It would cost me a hundred to build my own. Oh, I I shouldn't. This property is a loser. I'm gonna walk away from it. I'm gonna let it tax foreclosure happen, and then the city takes it over. They tear it down. That's why you start to see those, right? So if you see uh, a bunch of torn down houses in Cleveland neighborhoods, that right there should be a huge red flag. This is a super high risk area, and the uh, after repair values of my property can far far be far under the actual cost to repair my property if somebody trashes it okay so with this one being 85 i think it would be incredibly risky for you to invest in this neighborhood at that price point right because i have pulled up the comps over the last five years over the last five years we have 32 comps now normally when i do comps i like to do by six months quarter mile radius uh, when you get into super blighted neighborhoods the properties sometimes trade so infrequently uh, because just not a lot of people want to buy them sometimes, uh, you have to go back further to get a decent amount of data. So it took me five years to get you 32 properties to show you like a true look at the neighborhood, right? Sometimes in a popular neighborhood, you might see 30 comps over the course of six months, right? But as far as our prices on other multifamilies go, right? We got one sold for 3500 another one sold for 4500 
Got another one for 4,500. 8,000, 9,924, 12,000, 12 and a half, 13,000, 14,000, 15, 15, 20, 25, 28, 31, 31, 32, 32, 32, 35, 36, 50, 60, 61, 65. Now we're starting to get up there to where we are, right? 71, 75, 80, 84, 90, 90, 100 and a half, right? So... We do have, like, a few comps, right? I could pull, like, a handful of them, which would make you think, okay, maybe it's worth it. Maybe I should go for it. There are other people who've done it, but then when you look at all the teardowns and then you look at all the other houses that are going uh, for pennies, right, 5000 a house, 4000 a house, it, it, you start to see the whole picture that, yeah, that price to rent ratio looks really good, but am I going to be able to consistently collect it, right? So this is one I would say, like, uh, I think like a local guy or gal could go in and they could probably buy this house. Maybe they get it for uh, in the 70s. Maybe they have to pay 80. I don't know. Uh, they could probably work that seller down a little bit, I would assume. Uh, and if they're doing their own PM, they're very familiar with the neighborhood. Uh, they have some sweat equity built in, like they're doing their own repairs, their own evictions, things of that nature. They could probably squeeze out a pretty solid return, especially if they put in government stabilized tenants. But an out of guy, out of state guy from California, who's totally brand new to the region, uh, what you'd be doing is you'd essentially be buying one of the most risky investments you could ever buy, right? And here's the thing, folks, if you're investing out of state, well, first of all, if you're investing in real estate in general, right, you're taking on risk, okay? Now, if you're going one step further and you're investing in real estate from California and you're willing to go all the way across the country to Ohio, you're taking on a lot more risk, right? So you're taking on risk to be a real estate investor. You're taking on way more risk to be an out-of-state real estate investor. So in my opinion, I think advising you to then buy one of the riskiest possible investments, uh, it would probably be, in my opinion, too risky of a maneuver for you as you start your business. Maybe, 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 if you've had many years in the business, I would say maybe you take a swing at it. But right now, uh, my gut's telling you, you could do many other deals uh, that are going to be far less risky. So I would probably do those, right? Like, I guess, uh, you know, if you're camping with your boy, right, your homie, and uh, you guys get attacked by a bear, you don't have to outrun the bear, okay? You don't have to be faster than a bear. You just got to be faster than your friend, all right? So in this one, I'm not saying, like, this would be the worst investment, uh, but, like, you know, why take this one down if I could find you one that will probably suit your needs a little bit better? I right? think about it like the bear. You can't outrun the bear. You just got to outrun the jerk off with you, right? So I would probably pass on this one for you, Dirty. I don't think it makes sense for what you're trying to accomplish, what you've told me your risk tolerance is. So I would suggest we move on from this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.